That's right, Mrs. Spencer. It'll be ready any time after noon tomorrow. Fine. Thank you very much. I'll look for you then. Goodbye. Well, hi, gang. What can I do for you? Yeah. Now, oh, let me see. Uh, your dog is sick? No. Mm. You want me to umpire a ball game? No. Mm. Oh, I know. You want to buy out my fix-it shop and become millionaires. No. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so, uh, I give up then. We want to see your new fish. Come on, Uncle Bob. Show him to us, huh? <laughs> so that's it, huh? My news certainly travels fast, doesn't it? Who told you I had some new ones? Tommy and Jimmy Doherty told me. A couple of kids were talking about it at recess yesterday. Well, you know, I think it's wonderful that you kids are eager to learn about nature and the wonder world we live in. And you know, honest interest and careful observation are two requirements for becoming good scientists. Come on in my lab. I'd love to show you my new fish. Well, there they are. Aren't they pretty? Yes, they are. Must be lots of fun having an aquarium and taking care of all these little fish. Well, it is fun. You know, we can learn many wonderful lessons by carefully observing the way fish live and behave. Man, oh man, would you look at this one? She sure is beautiful. What kind of fish is she, Uncle Bob? <laughs> well, this she happens to be a he. This is the Mayo Betta Splendid. And he is one of the most beautiful fish you'll probably ever see. Now, if you look closely, you'll see just about every color in the rainbow sparkling in his sleek body and flowing fins as he swims around in there. But not only does he possess great beauty, he also has a ferocious temper. This little creature is known as the Siamese fighting fish because ounce for ounce, he's one of the best and toughest fighters in the world, a real champion scrapper among fish. And strange as it may seem, in the family of Betta Splendens, it's the father who cares for the babies and raises the family. The father? What does the mother fish do? Well, she performs her sole duty of laying the eggs. You see, the female Betta is much smaller and not nearly as picturesque as the male. And Mr. Betta does not have very much respect for her either. He would just as soon fight with her as he would with another male fish. Now, the Betta is what is known as a surface breeder. That is... Unlike most other fish, he cannot get enough oxygen from the water, so every few minutes he must rise to the surface and breathe oxygen from the air. But not only does he use air for breathing, he also does something very special with it. When he has decided it's time to raise a family, the male betta will start to build a nest for his expected offspring. And he builds it with some of the air he takes in. He builds it with air? How does he do that? He blows bubbles. Oh, come on, Uncle Bob. You're kidding. <laughs> no, I'm not either. That's exactly what he does. First, the father better will go up to the surface and breathe in a mouthful of air. Then he will swim to the place that he's chosen to build his nest. Now, this is usually by a plant or on the underside of a floating leaf. Then he will blow out the bubble of air, which is coated with very special saliva from his mouth. Now, it takes many trips back and forth to supply the hundreds of little bubbles that are necessary to house his young ones. The finished nest looks like a shimmering layer of dewdrops just below the water's surface. Then, when the mansion with many rooms is complete, the bettas are ready to mate. And what a delightful spectacle of courtship this is. Mr. Betta will dart and dash around the female, spreading out his grand fins and tail, displaying all of his colorful finery, while Mrs. Betta just swims patiently along. Finally, he will coax her up under his newly constructed apartment house, where the female will release the eggs, and the male will cover them with a special fluid as they emerge. Now, this process is called fertilization and will cause the eggs to grow into new little baby betta splendens. Then, as the eggs float toward the bottom, Father Betta will swim after them. When he's gathered up a mouthful of eggs, the male will blow each new egg up among the bubbles in the nest. 
This process is repeated until there are as many as 200 to 500 eggs in the nest, all sticking tightly to the bubbles and to each other. I think that's so wonderful and beautiful. Ah, girls are so sentimental. Oh, your sister's right, Gary. The plan which enables life to continue and flourish across centuries of time is beautiful, if it is thought of in the manner in which the Creator intended. And every one of us should be careful to recognize the beauty and wonder of this process in all forms of life. But I didn't finish telling you about the bettas. After the father betta has fertilized all of the eggs and placed them up in the bubble nest, he swims back and forth underneath the nest, guarding the eggs very jealously. For fish eggs are just what other fish love to eat. In fact, he won't even let the mother betta come around to visit. About a day after they are laid, the eggs begin to hatch. And after two days, the water under the bubble nest is filled with new little baby bettas. But after three or four days, they leave the nest to search out their own food. Three or four months later, they've grown up into adult male and female fish and are ready to mate and reproduce and carry on the endless chain of life of the betta splendor. I didn't know the father fish always took care of the little ones. Well, Gary, with some other fish, only the mother raises them. In fact, take a look at these in here. Now, they look like just common, ordinary little fish, don't they? Mm -hmm. They're called Egyptian mouth breeders. Now, why do you suppose they're called by that name, Egyptian mouth breeders? Because they're from Egypt? Right you are, Kathy. They come from a very famous river in Egypt. I know, the Nile. The Nile. Good for you, Bobby. Hey, Uncle Bob, look at this fish over here. He looks like he has something in his mouth. <laughs> You're right, Gary, except for one thing. This he is a she, a female Egyptian mouth breeder. And those tiny things in her mouth are eggs, which will soon hatch into little baby fish. You see, that's where she gets the mouth breeder part of her name, because she raises her babies in her mouth. What? How does she do that? Well, let's begin at the beginning. You see, when the mouth breeders have decided that it's time to increase their family, the male will begin to prepare a place for the female to lay her eggs. He digs a little hole in the sand by violently fanning with his fins. Then he gently coaxes the mother mouth breeder over the nest where she lays a few eggs. The male quickly covers the eggs with a fluid that will make them fertile so they will hatch into new little Egyptian mouth breeders. Now this process is repeated until about 100 eggs have been laid and fertilized. Now the creator has given most wild creatures a strong instinct to protect their young. And Mother Mouth Breeder performs this task in such a remarkable way. Now, even though she has scooped up all of the eggs into her very large mouth, she will not swallow them. She keeps them in her mouth until they hatch into baby fish. The eggs are only about half the size of a BB, but 100 of them make a pretty good mouthful for this little mother fish. During the 15 days that it takes for these eggs to hatch, the mother mouth breeder will not eat any food at all, and she grows quite thin. Now just imagine the self-control she uses to keep from swallowing those tasty eggs that are in her mouth, especially when fish eggs are fish's favorite food. But she will not eat them, even though she grows thinner each day from lack of food. Now, she's not chewing the eggs. That peculiar motion of her jaws keeps fresh water circulating over the eggs, which provides oxygen and also keeps them clean. In about 12 to 14 days, the eggs will hatch into baby fish. But the babies are still kept in the mother's mouth for several more days. Then they are allowed to leave their floating nursery for short periods of time. But until they are strong and able to protect themselves, the mother will open her mouth when danger threatens, and the little ones will scurry back into the safety of their mother's mouth. But, of course, each day they grow bigger until one day the faithful mother mouth breeder must let her little ones go to face life on their own. Boy, that's terrific. You know, you learn something new every day, huh? Well, you do if you keep your eyes and ears and mind open and really want to learn something. I have an idea. Why don't we start an aquarium of our own? It's a good idea. Hey, yeah, let's. Wait a minute. Who are we going to use for fish? 
You know, kid, you don't have to have unusual fish from strange, faraway places to start an aquarium. In fact, you know, all of the common, ordinary creatures that live right here around us are very fascinating to study and observe. How they are made and the way they live and reproduce. And you know, even those little minnows you can catch down in the creek make very interesting pets. They do? Great. Let's go. I've got a minnow that we can use. Fine. We can get some little rocks and plants from the creek. Well, that's good because those little plants are very important to a balanced aquarium. In fact, I tell you what you kids do. After you've caught your little fish, you come on back here and let me show you how to set up your aquarium properly so your minnows will live. Okay. Thanks, Uncle Bob. See you so later. Long. So long, kids. Have fun.